We are the locus of the primal creative force that brings meaning to our lives. To continue the case for side opposition, I look to Dr. Sean Carroll. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, fellow speakers, guests. It's a great honor to be speaking here in front of the Oxford Union. I'm reminded of my first visit to Oxford over 25 years ago. It was a highly non-sacred occasion called the job interview. I was on a short list of candidates to be a faculty member here in the physics department at Oxford. And I don't know if you appreciate, most, many of you, how different this experience is at Oxford than at the places in the United States where I'm familiar with. All of the candidates arrive on the same day and they have dinner together and they're competing with each other. Only one of them is gonna get the job. And then they give talks in front of each other and then they head home and then the committee the same day votes. So when you land on the plane, when you arrive, you are told whether you have been given the job or not. So I landed back home and I did not get the job. And I think this is when God died, as far as we are concerned. And the question before us is whether this is regrettable or not. This is a charmingly ambiguous and hard to understand proposition, I have to say. We're not arguing about whether something is factually true or not, or even whether some policy should be adopted, but our feelings. We're arguing about whether we should regret something or not. And indeed, it is not exactly clear what we are regretting. After all, the death of God is not literal. None of us ganged up and beat the guy up to a pulp until he died. It's a story that, as previous speakers have mentioned, talks not about a factual event, but about a shift in human perspective. Nietzsche's idea of the death of God was not that God existed and then stopped existing because of something that human beings had done, but that we mostly believed in God and then we mostly didn't. This is a vast oversimplification of the actual historical truth, but there's something that tracks in that description. We used to live in a more religious society. Perhaps now we live in a largely secular society, at least in this country, at least in my country, and so on. So we're being asked, is that a regrettable thing, that we now live in a more, in a more secular society, that fewer people base their lives around the belief in the existence of God? As previous speakers have said, this is a very different question than whether or not God exists. We could have a whole very different argument, arguments for and against the actual existence of God in our world, but I will confess that I kind of think the questions are related to each other. I think that I would be hard pressed to express regret about a bunch of human beings believing something that was true. And I would be regretful if a bunch of human be beings believed something that was false. So I don't think it's quite fair to say I regret that human beings are all wrong because God exists and they don't believe it. Let's be fair, let's ask the interesting question here. The interesting question in my mind is to construe the proposition as a comparison between two possible realities. One reality is one in which God does exist and most human beings recognize that and believe in him. And another reality is where God does not exist and most human beings recognize that. Would we perhaps counterfactually feel regret if we realize that we lived in the world where there is no God and we all knew it. Now, I think that's a better question. It's still not a well-posed question because no one agrees on what God means. To an atheist such as myself, this is not surprising because people made it up. People made it up differently in different parts of history, in different parts of the world. They invented different characteristics that they assigned to God. We have four people, speakers on this side, arguing uh, to in, in favor of the proposition. They don't agree on what God is. Philip Goff doesn't agree with himself about what God is. So to argue that we should regret the non-existence of a being that has not yet been defined is a difficult thing to do. But before we actually started debating, there was dinner, there was wine, there may have been port. I'm feeling charitable. 
let us construe the question the following way. Is there possibly a version of God who could have existed and whose absence we regret? Let us compare the world in which the best possible version of God existed, and everyone recognized it, to the world in which there is no God and everyone recognizes that. Well, what role would this God play? This is what it now is where the rubber hits the road here. What good is God anyway? And for a lot of people, there's sort of a more metaphysical, philosophical inclination to say that God is necessary to simply make the universe exist or to simply explain some feature of the universe, God as the condition of possibility for the existence of anything at all. I'm removing that from the table. That is not fair because we're comparing it to a world that does exist, okay? So we're comparing two versions, God existing, God not existing, but the world of our experience is the same. You can't say, or at least it's not interesting to say, I regret the non-existence of the God that prevents human beings from getting cancer. That God is not on the table as one of the possibilities. Given the world that we know about and live in, what is there left for God to do if that world would have gone on as it, we appear to observe it to anyway? I think that the answer is that God could play a role, again, trying to be charitable, to help us human beings. The thing that we could potentially regret is the absence of a guiding force, someone above ourselves, someone transcendent to our experiences here as finite, limited beings here on earth to give us meaningfulness, perhaps to give instructions on morality, on value, on how to behave here on earth. Now, I, I cannot help as a truth seeker but point out that if God did exist, and one of God's roles is to give us instructions and morals and values, God has done a very bad job at this. He's God. He should be able to write a clear textbook with very unambiguous instructions. Had God really existed, there wouldn't be multiple different scriptures giving us incompatible ideas about right and wrong. Everyone would agree. It would be hard to disagree with the correct version of God. But again, charity, yes, charity, I'm imagining the actual God. Now, some people who might say, well, in, even though individual religious traditions disagree with each other, there are universals, there are constants. If you look at at least the major religions of the history of the world, there are things on which they all agree. And I think that's true. Institutionalized misogyny, for example, is widely accepted among the major world religions. But the question is, could human beings have done that without God's help? I think that's the ultimate question we're being asked here. Do we regret being asked to live our lives ourselves without that amount of help? The proposition really comes down to not do you have faith in God, but do you have faith in people? And I admit also, that faith can be shaken. It has been shaken a little bit now and then uh, by recent events, but it's a mixed bag. And you know what? That's part of the charm, in my opinion. Human beings are not perfect. We do not pretend to be godlike in our imagination. We make mistakes. Some people make more mistakes than others. It would be absolutely wrong to think that without God's existence, human beings would be purely Bad. I cannot help but quote Penn Jillette, the magician. He is a famous atheist, and he says his religious friends sometimes say, but without God, people like you would be able to do all the murdering and raping you wanted to. And he says, well, I do all the murdering and raping I want to. I just don't want to do any. And I think that's how most of us are. The challenge for me to a religious person who thinks that God is helping tell them how to behave, giving them guidelines for being a better person is, okay, what is the behavior that God asks of you that you regularly do, that you really in your own heart think is wrong, that you wouldn't want to do had God not told you that? And I think that the best parts of human behavior and human achievement clearly come from within ourselves. And again, mixed bag. I think that in the world without God, 
That's a world in which we human beings get credit for the good things we do, and we get blame for the bad things we do. We are not only doing it or not doing it, but we are inventing the goals. We are creating the meaning within ourselves. We are the locus of the primal creative force that brings meaning to our lives. And the, yes? If we are creating the meaning in our lives, why do physicists create three more observed version of quantum mechanics than God? <laughs> physicists, this is, you have, segued me perfectly into the conclusion. Thank you very much for this. What are we doing here as human beings without guidance from a higher power, left here by ourselves to deal with things in the universe? We could go on at great length about trying to be a good person, trying to, create, trying to treat our fellow people with dignity and respect. We aspire to do that, sometimes we fall short. What is the evidence that overall we have it in us to do it. I could give many, many examples. I'm going to give this one. We think about the universe. The universe is tough to understand. We try our best to render it intelligible. And why do we do that? Sometimes for very down-to-earth craven reasons, but sometimes not. The quest to understand quantum mechanics is a wonderful example of human beings just wondering how the universe works. If we had visual aids here, I would show you my favorite image, which is the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. This picture that you get, if you take your camera and you point it at an empty spot of the sky and you click the shutter open and keep it open, if your camera is attached to the Hubble Space Telescope, then what you will see eventually is what you thought was an empty spot of the sky is alive with galaxies. We live in a galaxy with 100 billion stars. We live in a universe with a trillion galaxies, just in the observable part of the universe. We spent enormous amounts of money to make this image. Why did we do that? Who benefited? Who got more money, more fame, more power? Nobody, honestly. We have make all sorts of mistakes, we human beings. We do all sorts of things wrong. But that image that took an enormous amount of effort, we did that. That gives me hope that we can continue to do great things, and we should not regret the death of God. Thank you.